Legends, it's been a while. BJ Bush back again, another adventure. I've been living back in Alice for about six months. And at the moment, I'm in a place, it's a Ruby Gap Nature Reserve. So, it's, uh, it's east of Alice Springs in the Eastern McDonald Ranges. And uh, I'll tell you a bit more about it later, but basically there was, they thought there were rubies here turn of the century, the, the last turn of the century, and uh, but they turn out to be garnets, so everyone got excited, 2,000 blokes came out here, uh, not rubies, garnets, sorry, anyway, there's a waterhole up here somewhere, and uh, you know, I've got the drone out, we're going to do some camping, it's been a while, I haven't been here in seven years, anyway, let's see how we go, good to see you. In this episode, we drive 160 k's east of Alice to the beautiful Ruby Gap. See this, see this bloke? See this guy? I'm pretty sure that's Santalum lanceolanum, maybe. Anyway, it looks a bit dry and nasty, that old girl. Oops, it came off. It's, uh, you know. That's not too bad, right? That's not too bad. Tons of vitamin C in those little fellas. Obviously, dry climate, everything's what's the word everything's kind of uh, uh, focused that's not the word anyway snake venom vitamin C concentrated that's the word everything's really concentrated here because not much water so so those little fellas there they have like the vitamin C of 10 oranges or something like that yeah. good <laughs> spot we me me and the cruiser and uh, so you can if you've got a full drive like a high clearance one definitely high clearance you know sometimes when they say high clearance they don't really mean it but they mean it you wouldn't get in here otherwise you'd destroy the underside of your car if you got a Subaru Forester or something you know wouldn't bother anyway that's the cruiser she's in got the solar going Loving the solar, finally worked it out. You know, there's always these calculators, like how much, how much amp draw does my fridge use and how much solar do I need and blah, blah, blah. And, and there's all these calculators, which I don't reckon are that accurate. The only way to do it is to just trial and error. And now I'm at a place where it, as long as the sun shines, my battery will never go flat and the fridge will never go cold. And the beer will never go cold, warm. Beer will never go warm. Anyway, so this is this is basically what, what it looks like. Um, there's a place up there called Annie's Gorge. And I'm going to go swimming in a minute up there, hopefully, if there's enough water. Um, so you, you drive in. This is west, obviously. And you come in around there. And you come up onto the river bank and through there. And um, it's as far as you can go. I mean, it says no you know no access past this point but it's it's kind of self-explanatory because you, you wouldn't get over that stuff and you unless you were had a pretty extreme four-wheel drive and um you, if you smashed it up out here you're buggered so anyway uh let's grab a beer set up a bit and then then uh then we're gonna go uh swimming right <laughs> right ready to go probably told you this before but this little fellow might save your life. I always took it on my jeans there, and if I'm walking off on my own, then uh, if I get attacked by a 
bloody wildebeest or something, you can press the come and help me, I'm shit scared button. Actually, I shouldn't say that. It's only for emergency. Don't do it if you're shit scared. Only do it if there's an emergency. All right. And uh, it's not a mobile phone though, and it doesn't use the same network. That's one thing you've got to understand about these GPSs. There's, there can be a delay on the signal getting through, especially here. I mean, I'm in a, in a valley, right? Now, Garmin, they own their own satellites, and you've got to wait for one of them to come over. You know, Telstra's got lots of satellites. Um, Elon's got even more. These blokes don't have that many. Okay, so if there's not one coming across the sky here, this little fella is sending a message to nowhere. So there could be a delay, so keep that in mind. All right. Uh, you can use it to send text messages, um, which does diminish somewhat the experience of being in the bush. But um, also, sometimes it's comforting. It, it, it rings like an old telephone, sort of, and you'll be sitting there in your thoughts and you'll hear this and you kind of you, it's like remember like the old days when if you're old and you and you got brothers and sisters like me the phone would ring and you'd be like I'll get it and then you'd all run and have a fight about who was going to answer the phone anyway uh, so yeah take it with you if you need to and I'm going for a swim now let's go maybe three I've been eating vegetarian if I get the choice and uh, especially camping one of the benefits of that is that you know veggies last a lot longer than meat in the fridge kind of thing you don't have to refrigerate them as much and also once you cook them they last a lot longer as well you know this is a this is a uh, what is it it's kind of a red curry with tofu in it and I tell you, a couple of years ago if you said tofu to me I'd laugh at you. But I don't know, it's, it's easy, look man, it's easy for your body, that's what I'm saying. You can eat a ton of, of a vegetarian meal like a stew or whatever and you realise that veggies have way more taste than meat. Sorry Kev, mate of mine loves meat and I do love it, a good steak, awesome. But. Uh, I don't know, if, you know, if you're like me, you'd have a big meal and then you just have to go to sleep, you were useless. So, you know, this is one I made the last camping trip and I kept it and I'm just reheating it so, so you don't have to make as many meals. Oh, it's good, it's good. Veggie, give it a go. Well, legends, that's about the first day. Not much happened, but we drove out here. Hope you like the footage of that. It's a good track. It's um, it's uh, it's it's a high speed dirt road. Well, when I say high speed, I mean I mean sort of between 30, 40 k's an hour. I mean, if you know what it's like to crawl over rocks for hours at a, at a time, you'll know what I mean when I say high speed. Uh, not like 80 or 100, but you know, it doesn't take forever to get in here, which is awesome. But you still feel quite remote. So uh, I'm just going to have one more beer and then uh, that'll be that. That's the thing about the bush. You can go to bed, <laughs> it's still light, and you don't feel like an idiot. All right, I'll see you in the morning. Adventures. Yep. Ah, morning legends. All right, what a great sleep. Bloody great sleep. The good old swag and mozzie dome combo i recommend it so here i am in this beautiful little valley this is the hale river okay there's a place called hale river station actually which is more to the south east and uh, there's, a, there's the hale river track actually too which takes you down 
into the Simpson Desert, which is a little, it's a lesser known track, but it sort of bridges from, from uh, you know, north of Alice Springs down into the, into the Simpson. So check that out if you like. Um, so some photography in the morning. If you if you're if you if you're not into photography, then uh, you could get into it if you want. It's a lot like fishing. I've realised. So when I lived in Darwin, lots of fishing. And when you go camping, it was awesome because you could you could uh, you know you could go swimming, you could go cooking, you could go on hikes. But then fishing was kind of one of those activities that really determined your whole day because it's it's determined by the moon and the sun and the tides and the time of day and the sort of fish and the sort of environment you're in and so everything if you're going fishing that sort of dictates what you do with your day and photography is kind of the same so you know for example over here this morning about seven o'clock the sun hit the tip of those cliffs and I noticed that I thought right tomorrow I'll put the drone up and we'll get a get maybe a hyperlapse picture of of the sun coming down over that cliff what I mean coming down I mean enlightening it as the sun rises and here's the same so I don't know if you can see over there I've got the drone on a on a time-lapse setting so it takes a photo every five seconds for about 22 minutes and then what that does is this cliff when I started had no sunlight on it now obviously it's quite lit up so so uh, hopefully by the uh, magic of video editing it will look kind of like this <music> So today guys, we're going to walk to the top of there at some time. We're going to go over there and have a swim sometime, okay, pretty soon, after brekkie. First things first. you find eh? look at I don't know what has gone on there if anybody watching knows Rick Sheil I'm asking you mate what is the go with the almost polished appearance of that I don't know huh. cool so legends this tree it's called a corkwood it's the Hakea Siberia one of the reasons it's it's so thick and and kind of has such a, an aggressive bark is to stop it from well it does two things actually insulates it from the heat in the summer and also stops it from burning when grass fires come through but strangely enough when it dies it's the favorite wood of aboriginal guys and and me too it burns really slow, really hot, and uh, and uh, that's got to be good, right? Makes really good coals. They they burn down to nothing, right? So some coals, when you're cooking on them, you want big, big solid coals like the like the river red gums, the Camaldulenses. Um, but that one, in fact, like what I've seen is if 
if a fire, if the tree dies and the fire gets through the bark at the base of the tree, the tree falls over and then the fire will continue up all, all the way up the trunk, out into the branches and then you'll see it's kind of like, you know, when somebody dies in the old comedies, they draw a picture around where the dead body was. Maybe they still do it, I don't know. But uh, it, it looks like that. There's like a, a white, it's really white uh, ash. And this, uh, it looks like the, the exact kind of shadow of the tree where it fell. So I've been walking through there for a bit. Now we're back onto this. I wonder how many people know this is here. I do. And now you do. I just realised I haven't really spoken about the history of the place. So, David Lindsay came through here in 1886. And uh, he was an explorer in this country. You know, guys, if they had the means, they'd just come out and look around and virtually whatever they found, they could, they could keep if they had the capital. Um, so he came out here and, and he found what he thought were rubies in the rivers. And... Uh, so then obviously word gets out and as it was in those times, a bit like the gold rushes really, people would, would leave their jobs and come to find their fortune. Now we're, we're a long way from anywhere now, let alone back then. So imagine, you know, carting your life out here. As I was driving in, I thought, imagine walking, walking all the way out here, you know, just crazy. Anyway, for 18 months they had what they called the ruby rush. And Heaps of people were coming out here, and then it was discovered that the rubies were actually garnets and basically worth nothing. So, so people were, I guess, imagine that, oh, all that toil for nothing. Anyway, so north of here, that way, is Altunga, and there was a, there was actually gold there. So a lot of the fellas and their families moved up there and um, started looking for gold. So, anyway, he named this place Glen Annie Gorge after his wife. It's nice. And uh, that was the guy, David Lindsay, 1886. Hasn't changed much. Well, this is it, Glen Annie Waterhole. It is amazing. Hyperlapse time. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear it? That's my little drone up there. And I'm trying to capture, like I talked about yesterday, see the hills in the distance, that sun sort of coming down on the mountain as it comes up over there somewhere. Anyway, it should be a pretty cool shot. And, uh, by the magic of video editing again, it looks like this. All right, legends. Well, it's just about pack up time. So the cruise is about 90% packed. And um, one more swim, one more swim in our beautiful little, there's the birds again. One more swim in our beautiful little campsite lagoon. It's it's quite deep actually. It's it's um it's probably about eight or nine feet deep, and I didn't even go to the deepest part. So yeah, it's it's nice and deep. Sometimes you get to these places and you think, wow, look at it, and you get in, it's a foot deep. But this place, it's well over my head anyway. So yeah, it's well deep enough to to swim through. So. 
can't get over those birds. All right, well, I'll swim and then we're out of here. See ya. This is a bearded dragon. These guys are related to the uh, frill neck lizards up in the north there. Black tail, and then see the red? How close can we get? Ooh. Wow, so that is a display of you're getting too close. Very similar also to the blue tongue lizard. That's as close as we get. We don't want to annoy him. But that is really great. Like a lot of animals, they puff themselves up like humans when you want to look big and scary. That's really cool. See you, buddy. Well, that's about it for this trip, folks. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed Ruby Gap. And uh, so I'm heading home to uh, well, start editing all this footage, the, uh, the unseen job. Filming's awesome, editing, oh, editing's all right, but I'd rather be out here. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you uh, in the next one.